All right, episode one of Primary Surfacing. So, uh, the purpose of this series, in a nutshell, the idea is to show how making proper primary surfaces is going to allow you to make better, smoother models, help your workflow, and generally understand the tools that you're using better. But really, this is the whole thing is about going back to the basics and making your primary surfaces as good as they can be so that you're not totally hosing yourself down the line. Uh, who am I? Uh, I am Skylar Greenwald. I am half of School Street Design Company. Uh, I've spent about the last 10 years doing mostly freelance surfacing for the aerospace industry. I've worked in some other uh, industries as well, but primarily I work in aerospace. Uh, and much of my work has been in the production of low drag bodies and production surfacing. Uh, oftentimes I get called in to fix uh, issues and projects that uh, for one reason or another cannot be fixed in-house. Um, and so a lot of this video series is inspired and informed by all the projects that have come across my desk in the last decade or so where I see over and over and over again where things have gone off the rails from the very beginning. Um, a lot of times I get, you know, projects that come to me and they say, well, you know, we're having trouble with this blend or, you know, with this surface, everything else is great, but I don't know why this, this surface isn't working out. And uh, what, what happens a lot of the time is I go back and I look at the primary surfacing and the primary surfacing is not great. There's flaws, there's problems. Um, and so everything can really cascade from poor primary surfacing. And so a lot of times your poor primary surfacing doesn't show up until later in your model or later in your project when you're trying to do other things to that model, like offset it or make it watertight or make a nice blend or any of these things. Um, and so, so much of what I see can be traced back to poor primary surfacing. Um, and so that's what's really inspired this for me to, to put together this whole series. Um, I feel a bit like I'm the old man now saying like the kids these days aren't doing it right and get off my lawn. But uh, I guess instead of just complaining, I'm going to put together a series and be like, here's how I think you can do this stuff better. Um, so what I'll say is that understanding well, let me back up a little bit. Like we have all these fancy tools. We've got, you know, all these different ways of surfacing and, and every year, you know, more sub D tools. And, you know, in the past, of course, I use T splines and there, there's just, there's tools on tools on tools on tools. Um, but what I can say is that understanding the classical approach to NURBS modeling is helpful today, I think, to everybody. Full stop, period in terms of making a better model, it helps to understand the fundamentals of NURBS and why things were done a certain way um, in the past. Um, so even if you're not looking to do like class A service modeling, and we'll get later in this project in a whole discussion about class A, this is a very contentious issue and what does it mean and what's the definition and why does it matter? And you know, is, is, are the surface police going to come after me? Right. Even if you're not that person, um, I think that you can get a lot out of this series. Um, and notice that I'm not calling this series class A modeling or anything like that. Like much of what will be in this series will touch on and be informed by those concepts, but I'm really not dogmatic in that regard. Um, but like there, there are very valid reasons why high quality surfaces have been modeled in that fashion, like with these different workflows, these different tools, these different approaches. I feel a lot of that's being lost today. Um, and so it's really cool and fun and helpful and interesting to go back and just look at like the way th that things were classically done with primary surfacing and, and how that can help you make something better. Um, 
So who is it intended for, this series? Um, so anybody looking to make high-quality models of all sorts, automotive, transportation, like aircraft and ships and cars and product design, architecture, furniture, you know, anybody who really cares about surface quality or is currently struggling with surface quality and wants to, wants to eke out and, and make the, the best surfaces they can. Um, I'm always very cognizant when I'm working on some of the larger aerospace projects that I've worked on about, you know, you know, every, every time I send a, a file out the door, it's, it's okay. If, if this is the last chance I have to get this, you know, if, if this is my last swipe at, at, at submitting this file and they went and actually invested in the tooling, right? What would I be proud of what had gone out the door, right? Or would I be able to justify on projects where millions of dollars get spent on tooling, you know, like, like, there's an expectation there that there's not going to be wobbles and wiggles and, and wrinkles and all that, right? Um, so anybody who's, who's, who's wrestling with these, these issues of surface quality, this is, you know, this video series is for you. Um, who is it not for? Just as importantly, uh, this is really not um, a, aimed at brand new CAD users. Probably if you've been, you know, doing... Uh, you know, let's say surface modeling, not just CAD, right? There's there's a big difference between um, doing uh, like mechanical design, you know, like like so, you know, I, I say this over and over again that you know SolidWorks is great for doing mechanical design. It's not great for doing surface modeling. Um, it can certainly be done, but a huge part of my bread and butter is messed up SolidWorks models. So you know, I sort of see it on the back end where it's like. Mrr. Um, and so understand that you should have some grasp of surface modeling concepts and, and, and actually of, of going through some projects that are surface, like freeform surface modeling projects, not just mechanical assemblies. Um, I, you know, the way that I liken it is that, um, uh, you know, it's the difference between a, a machinist and a sculptor, right? And so there's a lot of CAD out there um, that is very much sort of, you're, you're the digital machinist, right? And me, myself, I sort of see myself as the digital sculptor, right? And, and so um, if you're a brand new CAD user or you're brand new to doing, you know, freeform surface modeling, this is really likely not, for you. I, I think you might get some stuff out of it, um, but this is really aimed at the user who's been doing this for a while and has uh, a grasp of the concepts and techniques and the problems and the pitfalls. Um, so the flow of the course, it's going to be a mix of theory and tool tips and tutorials. And then at the end, I'm going to cap everything off with multiple examples that demonstrate sort of everything that we've discussed in the whole series, like try to find some good examples that we can model just the primary surfacing and, and uh, of, of like, we're going to do an aircraft, we're going to do some car, and we're probably going to end up doing some marine application as well. Um, and uh, all of those things, really, when you get down to it, like from a surface modeling perspective, there's there's kind of no difference between any of those things. You're all doing the same thing. You're all making nice, clean surfaces, and then you're making blends between them and using matching commands and all that. So, you know, it's a little funny to think of, you know, that, you know, modeling a car is different from modeling an aircraft. I can tell you it's it's not. They're all the same <laughs> techniques and the same thought process and the same creative problem solving and all the rest of that. Um, in terms of the software that I will be using, so I use Rhino 5 and I use VSR or Autodesk Shape, which is a plugin that is unfortunately no longer sold. Um, and so I'm going to try to make as much of this series as I can compatible with your stock Rhino, but there's straight up, and I'll do a whole video on it, there's straight up, there's some things that you just can't do with stock Rhino or that, that 
stock rhino will uh, sort of try to sabotage you at every turn. It's a little ridiculous. Um, so I'll actually be doing a whole video on uh, what I'm, what I get out of shape that I can't get out of a stock rhino. Um, and this is also why incidentally I'm sort of marooned on V5 right now, um, because that was the last, uh, rhino version that shape supported. Um, so I'm kind of using an older version of rhino, uh, because it works for me and it, it solves the problems that I want, uh, which are all about, uh, surface quality and, and form and shape, right? Um, but I'm also hoping that people on kind of any platform, you know, any NURBS freeform modeling package, I think you're going to be able to get a lot out of this series. Um, I think that especially, you know, we're going to do a whole uh, module on patch layout, on on span, on matching, you know. So there's actually going to be a lot in this that's going to be, in a sense, platform agnostic. And so I really hope that those people can uh, get something out of this, even if you're not on Rhino. Um, so that's it. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to doing this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm looking forward to sort of interacting with people, um, on this, uh, seeing if we can come up with ideas of things to model together, um, how to solve those problems, all the rest of that. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I hope you enjoy the series. Feel free to like, feel free to comment, feel free to subscribe and yeah, uh, that's the intro.